Vicki Cohen is the author or editor of at least four books, a professor at Seattle University, and serves on the Washington State Arts Commission. She will read just before Robert Francis Floor, who's a Filipino American playwright and poet. Gracias, Gabriela. Is there a microphone? Or is yeah. Serious, but it's not I have a wimpy voice, so I'm sorry. We can hear you. I can be like the others. Um, I did bring um, a piece that I wrote a few, a few years ago, in case some of you wanted. I brought some copies of um, my little poem, Allies, a recipe. Some of my, um, some of my students really like that. I want to thank Kathleen for always you know, being there for so many years doing this and Los Norteños and I was so happy to be able to be with Catalina and, <laughs> and Bob and Raul and all these people here, Maya, now I just heard Maya, was just amazing people, I'm so happy to be here. Um, I wanted to do metaphoric walls and bridges, so I hope to cheer you up, but I also wanted to look at different perspectives. This is, I'll begin with a poem called Plays Perform Miracles for Russians in Seattle. And then um, I'm going to read a couple of poems from my forthcoming collection, The Runaway Poems. At the airport, planes fly for miracles, $200 of balloons, light skin tone tights, night sandals, took three rolls of 24 before the arrival, Sunday dressed men in leather jackets, is it grandma who arrives? Girls, pañoletas, scarves of silk, or hairdos like the 60s. Round with hairspray, like the world, Russia playing with a paddle in the plane on a plastic string. Three families arrive, five bouquets of bases. Something will endure, four to five children under ten, young boys making jokes. Russians with plastic leather, leather plastic clothes, mostly gray except for smiles, pink polyester for petty blondes, Balloons with smiles, hot air balloons in the waiting rooms. A brother of a brother of a hardworking man, patent leather mirror shoes. With teenagers who need mirrors, party at the airport lasts as long as a flight. Lasts as long as a flight. Ten years later, teenagers working at Krispy Kreme no longer immigrants, no longer miracles, no longer bilingual. <laughs> Only the pillow swims to my water. I would like to blanket, quisiera cobijarlos. Those who sing with their teeth on a snowy morning. The parents of the activist who is run over by a tractor. I would like to blanket the man who wishes to hate his co-workers and drink cold coffee at night. The poet who wrote his last poem before the war, the shopping teenager who isn't happy otherwise. The mother from the 50s who sends clippings to her children because she can't call them without commands. The alcoholic who runs to the liquor store on a cold night after a three-hour AA meeting could love wash their feet, clean their tormented ears, remove the calcite deposits from their eyes, or could a song wake them up, cock their wounds, return them to the shelter of their mind. Flight 491, Lufthansa from Frankfurt to Madrid. In the air, I have no relatives, culture, problems, or future. I rest. I cannot hate or love. I am perfect, whole, 
One suitcase and a bag, a passport, computer and phone, an agenda and a soul full of hope. No way to touch or be touched. The freedom of innocence and inconsequence. On the plane, there are no fences or choices of permanence. On this plane, choices are few, rare, counted, peanuts or pretzels. On the air, a bird am I. Inside, another man may dream in the air. On the plane, I rest from housework chores, emails, and promises. Forget we are wearing down with every nocturnal gaze, with every day on earth. We grow a new tree ring. With every passing ship, cloud or pool below. On the plain we rule over a world of movement, only birds away. I don't know if I've overspent my minutes already. Am I done? Okay, um, I'll read. These are one a little bit longer and one shorter. This is from the Runaway Poems, which is forthcoming with Finishing My Impress. It's called Walkabout. Cabo Mile did not make you whole as I suspected, my son. It didn't cure the ache of immigration. Your grandfather's native ache, your great-great-grandfather's European ache, you still had to go on your urban walkabout, my growth. No, the chamomile, peppermint, mango, guava, cloves, and cinnamon tea I transfused into you did not put you at ease. The novena I prayed for you, for your restless nightmares, didn't calm you. The herbs, the prayers, the happy colors of your room, the blessing by the curandero at the Zocalo last year did not cure you. The sweeping by the Zapotec woman didn't feed you, my son. The picture of you, my friend, took to the Virgin's Villa, my dear, did nothing for you. Your nostalgia was knee-high deep, my love. Our cutting of your hair did not purify you. The toxins of your culture were far gone. They have become part of your active blood. Wishilopochtli, my son. My pieces have become whole in your presence again. I, Cuatlique, have collected, resculpted, redesigned my heart into your head, your head into my heart. Oh, my child, God. And this is the last one. This is Donde Dejaste a Tu Abuela, and it's with the one that the collection ends with. Where's your grandmother? Where did you leave your grandma? Her image levitates behind you like a mountain, a mountain of unshattered hope. She would have never let you carry her. She knows about the loads of obligation they always drag. Where did you leave us? After years of holding our breaths, rural grandma held us up with her titanium hips. Her undying smile, her immigrant hunger, her infamous title of fastest line worker for Watsonville Canning. Her sustaining, unscathed heart, palpitating tirelessly like prayer, defending you. He's okay. At least he did not steal our cows. <laughs> he only left for a while. 